Hi everyone, Pink Lady here with Pink Lady Presents. Today, I, I'm in another world. I am so excited. For my age, I mean, that's really being excited. I want you to know that. Because with me today, I have a fantastic, someone who is living a life well. And that is a glamorous, classy lady. Gentlemen. One, two, three. <laughs> that classy lady is none other than our blues and jazz legendary beautiful lady, Ms. Barbara Morrison. Hello, Hello. and welcome to Pink Lady Presents. Hello. Welcome. Don't we look good to everybody? Look at this. Blue, the blue lady, and the pink lady. Hello. Also, also, I don't know whether our audience is even going to believe this, but Barbara's birthday is September 10th, and she is going to be a very young, 72 years young. And my birthday, we're both Virgos, is September 3rd, and I'm going to be a very young 89. Yes! <laughs> I mean, you know what? It could not have been better. Barbara, I mean, I don't even know what to say. You have done so much, and you've been everywhere. You've met everybody. Uh, you've sung everywhere. Uh, you, you write, you, you produce, you act, you do everything, and you're from Ypsilanti, Michigan. I didn't know people from Ypsilanti, Michigan did all that stuff. Yeah, it's, it's in the United States. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so tell me something. Your mom and dad, were they musicians? My dad. Really? Now what did he do? He played piano and he sang. Wow. And what was his name? Robert. Robert, Robert Morrison. He had a doo-wop group. Oh, I love it. And what was the name of the doo-wop group? It was the same as his name. <laughs> Robert Morrison. I love it. Were you an only child? Did you have other siblings? No, I'm the oldest of six. Of six? Wow. Six, I'm the oldest one. I love I'm it. I'm 18 years older than my baby sister. No way. <laughs> I'm not even going to go into that story. I mean, it's a family show over here. So, wow. Now, were any of them afterwards, were they musicians? Or my they? brother played, my, the one under me played trumpet. My other brother played saxophone, my sister played clarinet. Oh my. But the other two, uh, my brother and sister, they weren't into music. No, but that's still a, a large group in a family like yeah. that. That's fabulous. Um, you moved to L.A. You were about 23, I think. Mm -hmm. Why did you move to L.A.? Because I wanted to be in the music industry. Yes, yes. And I wanted to uh, be a big L.A. star. <laughs> Well, that certainly came true, that, yes. that's for sure. But you also, you played with the who's who of the world. I mean, really, uh, Dizzy Gillespie. I mean, Around. like, hello. Uh, Ray Charles. I mean, how did you meet Ray Charles? Um, actually, I was working in the Juggernaut, Frank Cap Juggernaut Big Band, and his manager was at the job that I was working on. Right. And he walked up to me and he said, where did you get those charts? I looked at her and I said, I bought them. He said, are they yours? I said, yes, they are. And he said, could you use them in another band? I said, they're mine. I paid for them. Right. You know, he oh. said, oh, can you, can you come up to Mr. Charles' office and blah, 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 blah. <gasps> and I didn't know he was talking about Ray Charles. Right. <laughs> I said, well, what does Mr. Charles do? And uh, he said, well, would you be able to go on the road? Just like well, when yeah. I got hired. <gasps> wow. Now, when you say with the road, how long were you on a tour with him? Uh, for about four years, I think. Really? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. And what about, you also, uh, did you go with Etta James and um, Johnny Otis? Otis? Yeah, we toured. Uh, we did Carnegie Hall. <gasps> we did Carnegie Hall. As a matter of fact, I had heard about the acoustics in Carnegie Hall. Right. And when Etta went up to sing, I went up first. And when she went up to sing, I went all the way to the back of the hall so I could hear what everybody said was so wonderful about Carnegie Hall. And um, I cried. Wow. That's how beautiful it was. I oh cried. my God. And I she sang 
At last, I just broke down and cried. Oh, my Lord. It was beautiful. Uh, what I want to know is, you also were with people like Count Basie. Oh, yeah. Now, you're talking Doc Severinsen, Count Basie, Clayton Hamilton. I mean... First of all, they were lucky to have you. No. I mean, I don't know the way you feel. I feel they were lucky to have you. How did you get these people? How did you find them to, to introduce yourself? I mean, this is, I know it's a great business and they hear about people who are good and everything, but it's still tough. These guys were legends. I had a catalyst. Really? Mm -hmm. I was looking through the <clears throat> phone book back then. We right. had phone books. Right. And um, I saw Sammy Davis Jr. Enterprise. So I called it, and uh, I loved Sammy Davis. Oh, yeah. And he answered the phone. Oh, oh no. <laughs> and I asked him if, I said, I'm, I'm, I'm just starting out. Can you give me some kind of direction? He said, no, nah, no, nah, I'm really, really busy right now. Here, call this number and talk to my friend Ray. <gasps> so I called the number, and I said, I got your number from Mr. Sammy Davis, Jr. He said, you might be able to help me. I, wanna, I want to uh, be a singer, and I want to uh, travel and he said, no, 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 no. You haven't done anything. Do you know who I am? And I said, well, Mr. Davis told me to call you. He said, I'm Ray Brown. I'm having enough problems with Ella. <laughs> and I said, he said, you take my name and, and, and people would just hire you just because of me. You go out and get on the road. You go get some work and you get out there in those trenches and you, you call me in 10 years. Well, guess what? I did. Ten years later, what did you say to him? I said, called? Mr. Brown, do you remember? He said, oh, for real? <laughs> Are you really? <laughs> he said, what have you done? I said, well, I've been on the road with Kenny Burrell and James Moody and da 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 And he said, have you done anything? I said, I made a record, and I did this, and I did that. He said, yeah, yeah, you're not ready. You <gasps> call me in ten years. Oh, my God. I know. And uh, by that time, I had gone around. I saved all my money, right. and I did a big band record, <gasps> and I hired him. Oh, I love that story. I hired him. He came and he played on my big band record, wow. and and uh, he did uh, when would when well, he did a solo on when did you leave heaven? Oh, um, yeah, really. And uh, I was going to Sweden, <gasps> and he hired me. He said, "I'm going to be at the Blue Note, and when you." Come from Sweden, you take your flight into New York, and we'll, you'll be at the Blue Note. Oh, my. So I'm sitting in the bed in Sweden, and I'm looking at television, and I, CNN had just started. My Ted, Ted Turner had in, started CNN, where they have 24-hour news. Yeah. And I'm looking at the ticker tape. It says, fame basis, Ray Brown dies in his sleep. Oh, my God. And, and that was for me to... The next day, I was going to catch a flight and drop down at the Blue Note and play with him. Wow. And I didn't get a chance. But I hired him, and he played Is on my that record. too? Yeah. Oh, my God. We'll be right back. It's about the humans. These humans. Those humans. Groovin' and golden. It's about getting more than health insurance and a partner who listens and acts. Humana calls it human care. It's talking to a doctor from your couch or helping you find a cheaper prescription before you ask. It's helping you fix the rugs so you don't fall and keeping you social, online or off. It's getting to know you so you can be your healthiest. That's our superpower. That's human care from Humana. How many years have you been actually singing and doing what you're doing? How many years is it? Well, I, I was nine when I did my first job. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. I, I, I sang... Uh, Stevie. That old already. I'm nine. the same age as Stevie. That's and, right. And I sang, I sang his, a song that he made when he was nine. Wow. Castles in the Sand on the radio on WCHB. <gasps> it was a Cox Broadcasting Station. It was the only black radio station in the country. Oh, really? Wow. And it was in Detroit, Michigan, in... Well, it was actually in Romulus, Inkster, Michigan, Ooh. which was part of Detroit. Right, right, Romulus. right. And uh, I just loved Stevie Wonder. And that's when I first started getting notoriety. And then when I was uh, 16, I entered the Junior Miss Contest. 
And yeah. this and this this little white girl was she was so nervous she was shaking <laughs> like this. And I right. said, I said, Come on, come on, calm down. It's gonna be okay. She said, Yeah, yeah, but my mother's out there, my father's out. I said, just don't worry, just be yourself, be yourself. Right. She says, I gotta win, I gotta win. <gasps> and I won and I was so embarrassed. <laughs> I, put, I looked at her and I said, don't worry, look at me. Have you ever heard of a black junior miss? <laughs> and she said, no. And I won. Oh, I love it. I love it. Oh, my. I couldn't believe. <laughs> now, how old were you at that time? I was 16. <gasps> that must have set everybody back a little I was 16. Bit. I that, love it. Well, now, when did you start the uh, Barbara Morrison Performing Arts Center? 2008. 2008. 2008. Okay. So that's what, about 14? How many years is that? 2008, it's uh, 10, eight, uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, almost 14 years. You're right, babe. You're, you're right. Um, I don't think our audience knows that you are <coughs> an associate professor of jazz studies in the global ethnomusicology department at UCLA. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that is a mouthful, darling. That I, is a mouthful. I love my job. And when did you become an associate professor? I think it was 1996. How long ago was that? 1996? 1996. Uh, 10, <laughs> 20, about 25 years ago. Really? I'm not that old. Come on. <laughs> no, we are not. Definitely not. But tell us about right now. You also know about something that I just found. It's called a Cameo website. Someone told me about that. What is that? Cameo is, yes. a, is, is a website that lets you talk to people that you don't even know in other countries all over the world. Wow. And they call in and get a request to talk to you. Really? Now, how did you find that? Uh, a, a general named Jay Jackson. Yeah, and, and he sounds familiar to me. Sounds yeah, he was the newscaster on Channel 4. Okay, okay. Channel, channel 9? Channel 9. CBS? No. Where was it? What was it? It's just Channel 9. Channel 9. It's a CBS affiliate. CBS ah, affiliate. Ah, okay. And, yeah. and then, so what do you do? You, you go on and you... And you answer, if they say, call me, uh, go to my cameo and say, Barbara, tomorrow's my father's birthday. Could you <gasps> call him and sing happy birthday? Oh. And you do. And you call him and they make a request and you... So if I called in and said, hi, my birthday is going to be September 3rd. I'm going to be 89 years young in my 90th year. Uh, can I get Barbara Morrison to sing happy birthday to me? Yeah. For a small fee. <laughs> <laughs> you bad, lady. You I bad. I love it. Okay, so right now what I would like to do is tell them that there is a big special occasion coming up on September 10th. And Barbara, would you like to tell them a little bit about September 10th? September 10th is when I do, when the California Jazz and Blues Museum opens up their doors and salute people in the industry that have been there for a while and made a name and some that haven't made a name. And we call it the California Jazz and Blues Hall of Fame. Last year we inducted Billy Davis and Marilyn McCoo, right. Frida Payne and Good Tie <gasps> Shorty. And Mickey Stevenson. Mickey Stevenson. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, uh, we are going to tell these people that you have a website. What is your website? It's real hard to remember. BarbaraMorrison.com. Wow, that's hard. I, mean, I don't know whether they're going to remember. Uh, we're going to have to repeat that, everybody. <laughs> BarbaraMorrison.com. Barb. Before we hear you sing for our audience and these great guys and everything, uh, how does it feel when someone calls you a living legend? Tell me, how do you, how do you feel? I mean, I always wanted to ask, because you are. There's no question about it. How do you feel about that? I'm so, sometimes I'm embarrassed, you know. Really? Yeah. You know, I have to tell you, though, in my opinion, never, ever feel embarrassed. <laughs> because to me, being a living legend, compared to what it could be, I say, God bless you. Thank you. Because really and truly, from what I've heard from people, from contemporaries that you've worked with and other people, like Mickey and everybody, you're a first class 
act. Wow. <laughs> and you see, in our industry, that's the name of the game, everybody. So I'm going to stop everyone, and I'm going to give you a chance now to meet Barbara's boys. We'll be right back. At one time or another, every family is faced with mobility issues for a loved one. Call Before You Fall is here for you with all the safety and mobility solutions your family needs. Come see Alex in the Call Before You Fall showroom, or if you can't, they'll come to you in one of their fully stocked service vans. So put your mind at ease today. Call Alex at 1-800-829-1491. Remember, be on the safe side. We are back, everyone. So, who are you? I'm Charles Small. Charles Small. Yes. You look pretty big to me, honey. <laughs> so, yeah, oh. I, I guess so. Huh? <laughs> so, now, what instrument are you playing? I'm playing the guitar. The guitar. Mm -hmm. And how long have you been with our beautiful lady, Barbara? Uh, off and on since 1992. Wow. Wow. Thank you so much for being here mm -hmm. with us. Thanks. And, hello. <laughs> Oh, look at this drum. Wow, you have one, two, three. I, you know, I, it always amazes me when I see a drummer and what he does. So what is your name? I'm Peter Buck. And Peter, how long have you been with the beautiful Barbara Morrison? Well, I first, I first heard Barbara sing in 1991 wow. at the Monterey Blues Festival. I was playing with another band. Ah. And then she came on a little later, and I was so blown away. I thought, man, one of these days I'm going to get to work with her. So in, the, in 98 and 99, I got a chance to do a couple gigs with her, and we exchanged phone numbers. So then I would just call her every once in a while. And all of a sudden, in about 2001, she said, oh, Peter, I'm so glad you called because I, I really need a new drummer. Ah. And uh, that's when I started working with her. And Fabulous. I haven't moved on. Well, I, I can see why, Bob. I can see why you picked some of these guys. So now I'm with this other very adorable young man. And what is your name? My name is Michael Soche. Ooh, wow. That was pretty sexy, Michael. Uh, tell me something. How long have you been with Barbara? I've been with Barbara a very short time. I don't think you're going to stay short, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, I'm sorry. What do you play? I play bass. He plays bass, everybody. Yes. And is it... Um, I heard that there's like electrical instruments. And not, is that an electrical bass? This is electrical bass. <gasps> How do you like that that I got that? Yes, Barbara, I'm good. I mean, you're rubbing off, Barb. There's no question about it. Well, what I'm going to do is I am going to leave you guys to do your thing, and I'm going to leave Ms. Barbara Morrison to these good-looking guys who are going to play. And you know what? We have a rose garden of beautiful, beautiful roses. That's Miss Barbara, a class act. So audience, you're in for a delightful, delightful time. Well, thank you so very much. You're so kind. Right now, I'd like to do feature, what I'd like to do is feature Peter Buck and Michael Soche on a wonderful song written by Mr. Bill Withers. And he actually gave me permission to do this song in a movie. And it's one of my favorites, and I love to hear these guys solo on it. So here we go, Michael Soche on the bass. Well, I hung my friend Till it's there appointed today Keep trying to tell me a hum. All you want to do is use me Well, my answer But all they want to use
They write it down and she talk to me. She told me that I ought not let you just walk on me. Well, I'm sure she meant well. Oh, but when I talk was through, I told her, sister, if you only knew, you'd wish you were in my shoes. Just keep on using me. Lord, to you, To you, be her. Sometimes, oh, sometimes, it's true you really do abuse me. You get me in a crowd of high class people, like the big lady, and then you act real rude to me. So proud today to have this classy lady with me because she epitomizes everything that we are in this country, and that is talent, class, a way to make the people of our country feel good every time she walks in a place with her guys. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Can I beg you? On knees, I probably don't need knees because I'm tidy enough. <laughs> One more song for the road. One more. You know, Robert Johnson was born in 1928, and he wrote 23 songs. He's known as the father of the blues. You got to help me on this one because in Mississippi they didn't say they didn't say, "Come on, you guys, let's go." They said, "Moan, moan." So when I say moan, you say moan, okay? Hey, fellas, hit me. The blues out of Chicago, Robert Johnson, Mississippi. Ball. Ball. Baby, don't you want to go? I said, ball.
come back God when I come back I want to come back just like this lady and I want to be just like you God bless you guys I tell you thank you from the bottom of my heart you have no idea you all are all you like together and thank you for making our day so perfect may God bless everyone and we will see you next time